So in this video, I want to share with you my three favorite desktop-centric Linux distros for 2019. Now I value ease of use and having a great out-of-the-box experience as my most important attributes, so by default, all of the distros on this list can be considered user-friendly. Also, being able to purchase a system with one of these distros pre-installed is a big factor to me because having a great out-of-box experience means that you can buy a computer with everything pre-installed and ready to go. I think having the option to buy a laptop with your favorite distro pre-installed is highly underrated, and all of the distros on this list you can purchase in one form or another. And let's kick off the list with Linux Mint. Now Linux Mint is probably the best all-around general desktop Linux distro out there right now. Seemingly everything just works out of the box. From driver installation, there's flat pack integration, there's even a new user dialog with a bunch of suggested actions, and documentation, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of distros actually provide the user with documentation anymore. There's also a cool little notification that appears right after you log in if there's something wrong with your display drivers and it's running in software mode. Like a lot of distros, Mint comes with a few different flavors, but Cinnamon is the most popular. Cinnamon uses a very neutral theme by default with Windows-esque defaults, like the taskbar on the bottom and stuff. But Cinnamon's really customizable, and if you want a GNOME 2 look or a Mac OS look with like a dock and stuff, you can do it. Mint supplies its own software repository and supports Flatpak out of the box, so most of the popular apps are available straight from the installer, or App Store, or whatever they call it. And Linux Mint isn't a very heavyweight distro, coming in at just under 800 megabytes of memory at idle. The install size was roughly 7 gigabytes, and the system startup time averaged about 12 seconds in my VM here. My main gripe about Mint is while the desktop appearance is neutral, it feels a bit dated, almost Windows XP era like. For example, the panel here on the bottom is just a solid bar. There's no alpha or anything. It doesn't look bad, it just doesn't really look great either. And if you prefer to buy a computer with Mint installed instead of installing it yourself, you got a few different options here. You can get a Mint box, which is a really cool little IoT sized computer. Or you can hop over to this eh, rather questionable looking site called Think Penguin. It clearly needs an update. But you can buy a laptop with Mint installed right here. There's probably other sites where you can buy systems with Mint installed, but these are linked right on the site, so hopefully they're supporting the project. That'd be pretty cool. Next up, we've got Elementary OS, which, in my opinion, is the most polished-looking distro out there, and it's also one of the most unique for a variety of reasons. Elementary OS is arguably targeted at having a great out-of-the-box user experience. The defaults are solid, if you like Mac OS, and everything just looks and feels great. It even has some built-in firewall and privacy tooling. Very cool stuff. Elementary OS is about average when it comes to system resource usage at just under 900 megabytes of RAM at idle. The install size is just under 6 gigs, and booting in, my VM got about 9 second startup time. Now the thing to know about Elementary OS is that everything about it is opinionated. The UX, the defaults, the lack of customization, the lack of PPAs, snaps, flat pack integration, it's all designed that way. In my opinion, the lack of customization can be a good thing for new users because it means that they can't screw up the desktop. I know I did that a few times when I was starting out on Linux, so putting some guardrails in isn't necessarily a bad thing. But what isn't good is the lack of apps. With Elementary OS, you get one option for installing apps, the App Center. Yes, you can use apps from the terminal, but you're still largely using the same sources as App Center. Elementary OS currently has no Snap or Flatpak iteration, and they even disable PPA support by removing the tooling that installs them. What does this mean for the end user? Well, if you want popular software like Discord, Spotify, or VS Code, you're out of luck. You will have to open up a terminal to install those. But if you want to buy a laptop with Elementary OS pre-installed, you're in luck. A little company out of the UK called Juno Computers sells them. Pretty nice looking machines too. Now last on the list is KDE Neon, which is the distinguished KDE non-distro distro. Both Mint Linux and Elementary OS are based around a framework called GTK. KDE is based around a framework called Qt or Qt. There are a lot of differences between the two, however most notable is that GTK is a community project, whereas Qt is an enterprise level product developed by the Qt company. KDE Neon is a great distro because it's fast, stable, beautiful, customizable, and has great defaults. I can confidently say that you can use KDE Neon day to day and pretty much never have to open a terminal window. The KDE Desktop is a surprisingly lightweight distro using less than 700 megabytes of memory at idle, has an install size of under 6 gigabytes, and the startup time was about 10 seconds. 
KDE Neon and KDE in general is far from perfect though. Until recently, it suffered from major compatibility issues with NVIDIA display drivers. However, the major desktop crashing issues have been fixed, but screen tearing is still an issue, especially in heavy 3D gaming. There's also a concern around the desktop being a bit too customizable. KDE is like the polar opposite from elementary OS in that you can literally customize everything and completely break your desktop in the process. That being said, KDE comes in the bottom of this list because while it is beautiful and functional, it offers a bit too much in the way of customization and not enough guardrails to help users. Also, the application explorer installer thing, Discover, it's pretty good, but it's also still kind of rough around the edges and it's not always easy to find what you're looking for. And if you want to buy a laptop with KDE Neon installed, the KDE Project, or KDE Neon Project, I'm not sure which one, is partnered with a European company called Slimbook, and you can buy a laptop from them with KDE Neon pre-installed, and I assume it supports the project, which is pretty awesome. Now that's the end of the top three list, but I want to provide two more runners up, which I really like, but I wanted to keep the list short, so I had to pick three. Solus Linux would come in at number four, a really great distro. It's been really popular lately. They just came out with Solus 4. It shares a lot of similarities with elementary OS in that it has its own desktop called Budgie, its own distinct style, and it's community driven by a handful of sharp developers. Juno Computers, the same company that sells elementary OS computers, also sells laptops with Solus pre-installed. And number five and last on this unofficial list is Manjaro, which is another really popular Linux distro. It comes in last on this list because Manjaro does a lot to make itself user-friendly, and but it is based on Arch. And me personally, I've used it. I've had it brick on me twice. I know that not everybody has had problems with it, and it's a really good distro. But because it's based on Arch, and Arch isn't exactly known for its stability, it's more known for its like cutting edge libraries and all this other stuff, I just can't recommend it the way I can recommend like Mint or Elementary OS. But Manjaro does have a lot of user-friendly tools, very similar to Mint. There's like a driver installer and some other stuff. It's a really good distro. And wouldn't you know it, you can buy laptops with Manjaro installed. You can actually buy several laptops. They seem to have partnered with a few different vendors, and you can buy laptops from them and support the project in doing it. It's pretty awesome. I love that stuff. But that's about all the distros I have time for in this video. Now I want to point out that if I didn't call out a distro, it's not that I don't like it, it's just that I like to keep my videos under 10 minutes and I just don't have time to include all the distros that are awesome. I do hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. You can also support me and the channel a few different ways. If you're interested in getting your feet wet in the cloud, you can use my code with Linode. I've also got a Patreon, you can check me out there. I've got a coffee, you can check me out over there. And you can always follow me on Twitter, I'm pretty active. And I appreciate everybody's support, and thanks for watching.